Okay, here are the supplies that you're going to need in order to uh, prepare your surface uh, for painting. Uh, safety is really important, so uh, nitrile gloves uh, are a good thing to use when you are working with these materials. Also, you're gonna want at least an N95 respirator mask. A P100 respirator is even better, and that's recommended if you have access to it. You're going to need yellow urethane foam that you're gonna finish. This is a medium density, but there are also lower and high densities. Uh, there are filler primers. These ones are from, <laughs> from Rust-Oleum. Rust-Oleum um, has two varieties. There's the filler primer and the filler and sandable primer, um, but they're both from the same brand, which we'll go over more later. We also have here Bondo, which is an automotive body filler um, that's based on a two-part uh, mixing process. And then with Bondo comes cream hardener. It usually comes in the cap like this, uh, but it comes with the, with the Bondo kit itself. And then you'll also need glazing and spot putty. These are both red when they come out of the tube, and when you buy them, they come in similar packages. So do note that these are different, and make sure that you get Bondo and then glazing and spot putty. To apply the Bondo, there's a variety of tools that you can use. These are spreaders that are designed to give you a color reference when you are mixing your Bondo. Uh, these are good for spreading over large areas, but uh, they may not be as good for small areas. For small areas, you may want to use these metallic ceramic ribs that you can get at art supply stores. Uh, or these are palette knives, which are used for painting. And you'll see they're a little bit flexible. Um, and I've got a couple of sizes of these rounded, uh, elongated ones. And then I also have one here that has sort of a sharp point. Um, these are also good for mixing, and you can scrape them off so that they're very reusable. Um, and then we don't have one to show you here, but some people, for very small details, will also use a razor blade. Finally, we have some 400 grit sandpaper here. This happens to be wet dry. Um, and then there's this new kind of fancy flexible sandpaper, which for some parts of your model finishing will be very useful. So there you go. Those are the supplies that you are going to need. Okay, so when you start working with your uh, urethane foam, um, you can start making cuts into it uh, using your orthographic views. Uh, many of you know to use tracing paper to kind of translate those views uh, and then use the bandsaw to cut your form. Um, so right now we have a pretty raw form, um, and you can see on the top, it almost looks like it's a good smooth surface, but when you really look at the details of it, there's some chunks missing, there's some striations happening. Um, you can kind of see the shadows as you move the piece around. Um, and then on the sides, there's definitely some major issues um, and areas where you want to get it down to the true form that you're looking for. Um, now, if you've, you've made a mistake on the bandsaw and you've made a gouge that is actually deeper than the intended line of your form, um, you can fill that in later. Um, but you want to get it down to your intended form. Um, if you've gone too deep, leave it for now. Um, but when you begin sanding, you're going to start with the 150 sandpaper um, and then move through the different gradients of sandpaper. Um, so you're going up in numbers, so you've got 150 to start, moving up to the 220. Um, and then you can go all the way up to the 400 grit sandpaper, which is going to give you a really nice um, smooth finish. Um, and then that's the sandpaper that you'll use in between your primer coats. Um, so as you start sanding, um, you can use a sanding block. Um, this is just a block of wood that I have, but you can use an official sanding block from the shop, um, which you wrap your sandpaper around to kind of give you a really even surface so that you're getting a nice, flat, consistent um, angle on your piece. And then if you'd like to, you can also create your own um, sanding block that works for curved areas by using a dowel rod. Um, and the way that you make this is you use spray adhesive in the spray booth um, and you spray it on the back of your sandpaper, wrap your sandpaper around the dowel rod, get it nice and tight, and then cut off the excess. Um, and then once you have this made, you can use this to get into these curves and you're going to be nice and tight on that curve rather than trying to push a flat sanding block into a curve and 
getting some unintended damage that you didn't um, want. So you see the difference between the surface over here where you can still see some of those facets versus over here where they have been removed. Uh, yeah, so that was a remnant of the CNC, and so that needs to get like taken off. I was like, I don't know where this is supposed to be at. But as a designer, you'll have the vision. Yeah. Um, so I guess one thing to note with this is making sure you're really par or really parallel to the side of your form. Mm -hmm. Show it what show what it looks like when it's not right. Like that, that, right? <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, look, I got jacked up super yeah, hard. It's already. Wow, okay, don't do that. Yeah, so okay. we'll pretend so we're gonna make a chamfer. Break <laughs> <laughs> on that edge. <laughs> and this is a hard thing to control. So, you know, if it's something that's really this significant, you might want to consider using a router, but. Um, I also like to count how many times I do it so that if I go to the other side to make it symmetrical, mm -hmm. I didn't count that time, so I can't do it. But I think it was like six or five. Yeah. You can just follow the video. <laughs> That's kind of uneven, but it gets yeah. it starts getting it to the point where they're almost the same. So okay, but so there we go. Um, last semester, I saw Professor Bullock like giving standing demos. He's like. He looks like he's playing a symphony when he's sanding. It's, it's beautiful. <laughs> this is so sandy. And something to keep in mind is that um, if you've got two pieces that are supposed to fit together, for example, this product is meant to be a lid with a bottom, so there's a second part that's meant to fit below this. Um, you're going to want to make sure that you're sanding those kind of together so that you don't end up with one that's beautifully sanded but slightly proud of the other form that you're making. All right, so what we have here is um, basically the full spectrum of uh, pre-prep that you can do. So we have some areas that have been sanded pretty well and we have some areas that still have gouges in them and that's okay for now. Um, we have edges where sort of excess has been taken off and we have edges where it has not. Um, and again, you can still sort of see uh, if you look closely, some of those surfaces uh, versus no surfaces here. So just understand like what we've got here is many different types of pre-prep. And so after we spray, we'll start to see the differences that come from them. Now, when we, um, I'm not gonna spray it. <laughs> so uh, when we paint, the first thing we need to know is uh, we have to do this in a well-ventilated area. The spray booth is most appropriate. Um, and uh, so here's our filler primer. And the purpose of this is to start filling in some of these tiny microscopic holes in the foam, right? So when we paint this, it'll be obvious uh, how rough this surface really is. Now when we paint, the idea here is to fill in, but we don't wanna just douse this thing in paint. We wanna do some relatively light coats. And I, I've read the back and it says here that um, I need to wait. It can be uh, dry to the touch in 10 minutes. Um, and allow more time for cooler temperatures when dry surface can be immediately recoated, top coated, or sanded. For best results, allow to dry two to four hours before dry sanding. Um, so if you use a thin coat, you'll be able to dry uh, to sand much more quickly than if you just So to recap how this is gonna work is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have my piece here and I'm just gonna make some quick passes. I'm gonna go and then I'll turn it over. But these are very quick, so I shouldn't be hovering, and it should never be at the point where I'm letting this drip. Okay, so what you'll notice here is that I do not have great coverage, and that is okay. There are some places where it's a little heavier than others, 
Um, but right now we can already start to see the effect that the different um, levels of surface prep prior to priming have. Um, we can start to see real big differences in the form. Um, so uh, what we'll do is we'll kind of like wait a few minutes and then we're going to hit it with another coat. Here we go. We're going to do, and by the way, you can keep the camera close. It'll be okay because it's drying. I mean, not that close, but like maybe not as far as before. <laughs> okay, so here we are. <laughs> um, we waited a few minutes and we're going to hit it with a second coat of filler primer. After a couple of coats here and you'll notice that we still don't have consistent coverage all the way across there's not a set number of coats that you need to do in order to get it um, to where you're gonna first sand it for the first time instead you just want to look for pretty good coverage but you don't want to shortcut it you don't want to just douse it in paint you want to go slow over many coats um, it will end up working out much better for you in the end okay so at this point there have been a few light coats that have been applied to this form and we can see that um, pretty good coverage and we can see already just looking at this if you can see those lines that are coming through here uh, you can see that the, the paint's not really filling in those kinds of imperfections it's also not really uh, filling in anything like this here um, and certainly not these deeper ridges on the side um, but it is starting to sort of fill in that foam there um, and now we're just going to hit it really quickly with some light sandpaper. Uh, it's not going to get us all the way there, but we're just going to do this as an intermediate step before we start adding more primer. So you can see that some of the dust that's being generated as a result of this sanding is kind of being pushed into these holes a little bit. Uh, and that's a good thing. You can also see that in the areas where I didn't really sand it ahead of time, uh, I'm starting to see areas where high spots are becoming more visible. And so if we look through this, if I were to do this to an extreme, eventually what you'd see is the foam would start showing through in these parts. So this is why it's really important to sand it ahead of time. And I will also attempt to follow the same contours that I I didn't do this I did <laughs> earlier. <laughs> that were created at a previous time. time. Alright. So just to show again, if you can get a close up on that. See how it's starting to fill in a little bit more than it was before? Now we'll hit it with some more primer and we'll get even more filling. Okay, so you can see here is an example of sometimes you might get a gouge or you might accidentally sand through. Um, so I'm gonna leave that at this point. I'm not gonna try and feather that out or make it even, what I'll have to do is I'll have to probably use either filler putty or Bondo here to even that out. But what I am gonna do is I'm going to take this sort of half filled area and I'm gonna hit it with more coats of the filler primer. Okay, so you can see that there's a difference already even between this area and this area over here. The places where the sanding block made contact and the sandpaper knocked back some of the surface, it looks a lot smoother and there's a lot more filling in of that foam, those foam cells, whereas over here you see that there's a lot less of it. So the sanding is definitely necessary in between the coats. Okay, so what you can see now, if I zoom way in, is that there are some areas that are completely filled in and then there are some areas that have yet to be filled in. So this guy's still wet. We just gave him about three more light coats and again the number is going to vary um, but we're going to take a break a couple hours and let it dry some more before we hit it with some sandpaper again.